Jesus said, get, got into the boat and said, let us go over to the other side. One of the things that interest me, intriguing here is, he is on the boat with them. He, in fact, initiated the journey. And the wind storm came while he is on board. It's one of the moments we ask ourselves the question in life is if we are going through storms, we ask ourselves if we are in the will of God. We ask ourselves if God is with us, if God is on board with me on this. Maybe God is not in this. Maybe God is not with us. Maybe this is not the will of God for our lives. Um, the storm of Jonah is the kind of storm when you are outside or trying to get away from God's will uh, and purpose. But this storm is the kind of storm that comes when you are right in the center of God's purpose and plan for your life. Jesus was on this boat, yet the storm came. First thing to realize is that the storm is not a sign that Jesus is not on board. The storm is not a sign that God is not in that journey. The storm is not a sign that you have been separated from his presence. The storm was not a sign that they were separate from him or they were separated from him and that his presence was not with them. And I hope this is blessing somebody already. The storm doesn't mean that God is not with you at all. Verse 23 says, the wind came and their boat was filled with water and they were at the risk of sinking or capsizing. And Jesus is with them. And don't forget that scripture where 1 John 5, 4 says, whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. Anything God births has the overcomer's DNA in it. God has never designed a plan that does not require faith to fulfill. This journey is born of God. And one thing I want to assure you, children of God, is that if you are a believer in Christ who has made Jesus their Lord and Savior, you are on board with Jesus. And God, Jesus is on board with you. The boat signifies the purpose and plan of God for your life. Just like I said, your calling could be a, your calling, your ministry, being in Christ Jesus, being called to be a believer in Christ. And if you've answered the call of God on your life in any of this category, you are on this boat. You're on the boat. But you're not alone on the boat. Jesus is also on the boat with you. And the fact that they're having to deal with the storm did not mean he was not on board. It's one thing to call you and send you on a mission and say, do this for me. When you finish, go to this place and do this for me. But in this case, he did not just call them to send them to somewhere. He called them to come on board with him. It's not your journey. It's not your mission. It's his. He called them to come on board where he was going to the other side. And it's important to realize that this is not all about you. This is not all about you. My life, my purpose, my plans, my mission, my ambition, <laughs> glory to God. If we will realize that, that when we answer the call of God to be a believer in Christ, it is no longer our plan. It is no longer our journey. It is no longer our show. It is, it has become his because we got on the boat on his invitation. Because they had no intention of going on that trip. It was totally his idea. Now they are in a storm because of a trip that he invited them to that otherwise they would not have been in the storm. Sometimes we live our lives as though it was our idea to be created in the first place. As if it was idea, our idea to be born where we were born. As if it was idea, our idea to be 
in the family where we are, which part of the world we were born, where we were going to, whether we were going to be male or female, white or black, which of those decisions did you make? So why should you regret a decision you didn't make or why should you take the blame or the credit for it? The truth is Jesus brought them on board. He's the sponsor of this trip. He's the director, he's the producer, he's the, he's the pilot, he's the captain of this trip. Now, understanding this is revelatory because it makes you live your life knowing that Jesus is on board with you. And it's not just that he's on board with you, you are on board on a trip he invited you to and that your life was not your idea in the first place and that his presence is with you as a believer in Christ, as a child of God. He said he would never leave nor forsake you. Secondly, it's not, and it's important to realize that this journey it's not a journey without a destination, not a journey without purpose. It was, a, it was a journey to a specific destination. When he called them, he called them to himself and says, let us go to this place. Let us go to that particular place. God is not thinking of where to take you. He knows exactly where he is taking you to. He didn't say, let us sail to wherever the wind leads us. He had a specific destination in mind. He said, let us go over to the other side. So storm or no storm, there's a specific destination that this boat is heading to. And this storm cannot change the direction, neither can it change the destination. Oh, I wish somebody would hear that. This storm cannot change the direction, neither can it change the destination of this journey. He said, let us go over. <laughs> because you are going to go over the storm. Let us go over, meaning that there are going to be some bumps on the way, but we are going to go over. He wouldn't say, let us go over if there was nothing to go over. There's going to be bumps, there's going to be hurdles, there's going to be pits, there's going to be hills, there's going to be mountains, but you are going over to where? To the other side. Uh, sometimes between your old life and your new life, there is a storm, but there is something better on the other side. He had performed, look at this, he had performed miracles on this side where they were before the journey. He healed people, he touched many lives, but now he is about to go over to the other side for more ministry, to touch more lives, to heal more people, to have a greater impact. So there is something great, there is always something great on the other side of your life in God, something greater, something better on the other side. There is more, no matter what you've achieved, no matter what you've done, no matter the success you've had, no matter the, whatever has happened on this side, there is something greater on the other side. Glory to God. There is something greater on the other side. Somebody needs to say to themselves, there is life on the other side of this storm. Somebody needs to say to themselves, there is something greater for me waiting for me on the other side. There is another side to your life. There is an other side to your journey. There is an other side to your purpose. There is an other side to your calling. I don't know if I'm speaking to just myself, but there is an other side to your journey. Something is waiting for you on the other side and it is better than what's on this side. Let, this calling is simple. Let us go over. And you see the word let us changes the equation because he didn't say you go over to the other side. And he didn't say I'm going over to the other side. He says let us. My goodness. For him to say let us is it brings him in association with you. 
Bible says, to whom he is joined to the living, there is hope. You are joined to God. You are joined to the living. The rope that binds you together on this is his word. Let us. In fact, that ought to change everything. Let us. <laughs> Meaning he's not sending you on a trip that is not going with you. Meaning he's not going on a trip that is not taking you with him. Let us. So there is something great on the other side of your life. God is taking you somewhere. This journey is taking you somewhere. And there is greater things <laughs> on the other side. So no matter the storms or the bombs, you will make it to the other side. Just don't quit. Don't give up. There is something greater on the other side. You have a purpose to fulfill on the other side. You have an assignment from God. You have a calling of God over your life, but it's waiting for you on the other side. Don't let the storm make you quit. How do I know? As soon as Jesus came off the boat on the other side, a demon-possessed guy comes up to him. This guy, nobody had been able to help him. He was a problem to the whole region, to the police, to the law enforcement. They, they, anytime they, bound, they, they, they chained him, he broke every chain. So they didn't know what to do with him. He, he came out of a burial ground from, 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 from the tomb. That's where, that was his permanent address. And up till then, they had not had such an encounter. So there is a greater, there was a greater purpose on the other side. And Jesus alone had the solution to the problem that the whole city, the whole county, the whole region had with this guy. Nobody knew what to do with him. No wonder the storm was trying to stop them. There's a purpose for you to fulfill in God. And there's a greater purpose on the other side. You have a purpose to fulfill on the other side of every storm. <laughs> Guess what? Every storm has the other side. It's, 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 a, it's like a principle. When you get on the other side, you look back, that's when you understand, wow, this was what this storm was all about. Because until they got to the other side, they did not know this man full of legions of devils and why God or why Jesus was taking them on this trip with them. Yes, they thought they were going to perish, but Jesus is in the same danger as they are in. As long as he could not perish then, they couldn't perish. His presence is the assurance they needed that they were going to make it through. God's presence is the assurance, the only assurance you need. His word is the only assurance you need as a child of God. Because the version of him that you have right now is his spirit and his word. And they are just as real as his physical presence. Why? He said, I send you and I, I, when, I'm, when I'm gone, I will send you the spirit, yeah, an advocate. And that it is better that I go so that the Holy Spirit can come to you. It will guide you into all truth. It will leave you. I will never leave or forsake you. Now, why would Jesus promise a counterfeit version of himself. If he wasn't deceiving us, then the presence of the Holy Spirit is just as efficient, is just as powerful. The presence of the word of God with us is just as powerful, is just as efficient, is just as potent as the physical presence of Jesus. Because he did not send us an inferior version of himself when he gave us the Holy Spirit. He didn't give us a less powerful, less potent, substandard version of him when he said it was better that I go. When he knew that he couldn't be everywhere physically at every time, but the presence of the Holy Spirit can be anywhere at any time all over the world. That's why he said it was better that I leave. So that the ministry of the Holy Spirit can begin with you. Then you know you have me always, everywhere, no matter what, no matter where. 
His presence was is the assurance they needed that they were going to make it through the storm. His presence is the assurance you need. You don't need any other thing. His presence, his word, is all you need to know that you are going to make it through the storm. This was not a storm where he walked in on water to come to them. If he has to do that, he would. But in this storm, he is on board. <laughs> in this storm, this time, Jesus is not going to show up walking on water. That was another instance. This time, he is right there with them. It's one thing for God to show up in the midst of a storm. It's another thing for him to be in the storm with you already. In fact, he started this journey in the first place. The Bible says, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun the good work in you <laughs> is able to complete it until the day of Christ. And that scripture again says, whatsoever is born of God, whatsoever, whatsoever is born of God, 1 John 5, 4, be it your calling, your ministry, your life, whatsoever, <laughs> my goodness, is whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. You don't give back to children who don't have your DNA. You don't give birth to something that is totally not connected to you in relationship with genes. <laughs> My God. Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. You see, when Jesus woke up, what did he do? What does he do? He speaks to the storm. He did not talk about the storm. He talked to the storm. We've got to speak to our storms, brothers and sisters. Sometimes you don't even need to speak to God about your storm. What you need to do is speak to the storm about your God. He's on board with you. What do you do when you are assured of his presence? What would you do if you knew that Jesus wakes up with you on the, from your bed every morning and that when you get in the car to go to the work, he's there with you? And that when you step through that door and open that door, is opening with you. When you're taking your seat, he's sitting with you. When you're in that board meeting, is is there with you. When you're making that transaction, he's there with you. <laughs> Sometimes you don't need to tell God the name of your storm. You need to tell those, your storm the name of your God. That he is Jehovah Rapha. Is Jehovah Elohim. Is Jehovah Jireh, Jireh my provider. Jehovah, the Jehovah El Shaddai the the all breasted one so storm don't you think you are going to drown me <laughs> because i have jehovah the way maker with me don't you think you're going to take me down i am an overcomer because i have got jesus <laughs> I have got the presence of God with me. No matter how long this is going to take, I don't know, but I know that this is going to be over and I'm going to make it to the other side. Ask me how long, how short this is going to last for, I don't know, but I know, <laughs> oh yes, that he says he will never leave me nor forsake me. And I know that this storm is not a sign that he's not with me. Glory to God. They complained to Jesus, but they never spoke to the storm. Now, he wakes up and shows them what to do. And then after, he asks them, where is your faith? David says in Psalm 27, the Lord is my light. <laughs> Glory to God. What does light do? It guides you through darkness. When things are dark, it brings light. So you see, you are divinely illuminated in the midst of a dark situation. That's when you can have a revelation in the midst of a difficult situation. And uh, glory to God. Even though the darkness is still there, the light makes you see in the midst of the darkness. It says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Of whom shall I be afraid? 2 Timothy 4, 1, 7, where we read before says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but out of love and power 
and sound mind. This is the heritage of those who are in Christ Jesus, that we can have a sound mind in the middle of a crisis, that we can have a sound mind in the middle of a storm. Glory to God. That, my, that we can have a sound mind in the middle of a trial. Whether it be with our health, whether it be with our job, whether it be with our children, whether it be with our family, whether it be with our marriages, whether it be with our ministry, whether it be whatever it is, that we can have a sound mind. <laughs> that what is given us such is such beautiful inheritance that he has authorized us to be anxious for nothing. Now, who told you to be not to be anxious? The one who has the authority to tell me not to be anxious because he knows that he's got it all in control. So I can smile, I can laugh, I can dance, I can sing in the middle of a storm because I was authorized by the maker of heaven and earth. Who, whose authority is higher than that? Who gave you the license to sing and dance in the middle of that situation? The only one who has the authority to, to do so. Who gave you the license to smile in the midst of a difficult situation? The one who has the, the authority higher than any other Overcoming faith, what we're talking about is faith that comes when our mind is fixed on the truth that God is with us. The knowledge that God is with you empowers you. It emboldens you through any trial. It makes you knock on doors of solutions with boldness. <laughs> and if you are denied, it makes you move on to the next one in boldness it makes you move on to the next one and the next one and the next one because you know that god is with you seeking for help without being timid because you know god will open some door somewhere if it's not here if it doesn't happen now it will happen eventually it will be next one but bottom line fear not because he's with you. In verse 3 of Psalm 27, David says, my heart will not fear. I think I'm going to read that Psalm 27. That's the last thing we do today. Yes. The Lord is my light and my salvation. That means my savior, my deliverer. Not salvation of just your soul that I am. Accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. No, your salvation in any situation. It's because salvation means being saved. That means he will save you. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength. If you read this scripture to yourself every day and it becomes your reality, this is more empowering than anything else you can think of. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When you've got the Lord as the strength of your life, what is there or who is there to be afraid of? Verse 2, when the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me. If anybody can say this, this David, he was at war. He fought 58 wars, 58 battles in his entire time as a king. That's, that's, that's not, many of us have only, our countries in our, our times have only had maybe 10 or 5 or something. He was constant, his life was constantly under threat. Threat. He knows what it means for the enemy to encamp you around and you don't have anywhere to go. He knows what it means to be surrounded. He knows what it means to come to your wit's end 
to have your back against the wall, and if God doesn't come through for you, you're finished. When verse three, when, verse two, when the enemy wicked came against my eyes, verse three, though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though a wall should wall should rise against me, in this I will be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord and this and day of my every day of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and inquire in his temple. He says the most important thing is to seek God and to be intimate with the Lord. He says that's all he's preoccupied with and the rest is God's job. Then he says, why? For in the day of trouble, verse five, in the time of trouble, he will hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock and now my head will be lifted up. And the secret is dwelling in a secret place. My head shall be lifted up above my enemies and round about me. Therefore, I will offer his, in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, I will sing praises, O oh Lord, to you. Bottom line, overcoming faith is one, it's only possible when our eyes are fixed on him and that we understand that his presence is with us and that he shall never leave nor forsake us. Not just knowledge that we're aware of that scripture, but that it becomes a reality that we live with each and every day of our lives. And that when our thoughts want to overwhelm us and take us in a different direction, we get back to that scripture. Because every scripture is like an ammunition that God has given you against the wiles of the enemy. You don't leave your gun or your bullet at home when you go to war. You take it with you. That's the same thing God has done for you. He has armed you with his word. So for every challenge, for every situation, we must be completely armed with the word of God. And when it seems like the enemy wants to overwhelm us with all kinds of wiles and storms, what do you, we do? We get back in the word of God. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. God bless you. I hope this has been a blessing to you today.